What's the word, y'all? Today, I want to talk about those teams that are stuck in mediocrity. Those rosters that might be a 500 team, maybe slightly below that, maybe slightly above that, but every single season, they are just stuck in this spot and they are okay with it. Because honestly, I, I believe it is the worst possible place to be in any sport, really, but specifically in the game of basketball, because there's really no value in that. So there are a few teams across the league that fit into the spot. One of them is the Washington Wizards. Now, Bradley Beal went on the No Chill with Gilbert Arenas podcast, and he says something that perks some people's ears up and i want to play you one of the clips that is a catalyst for this video because i'm actually surprised at how candid bradley beal was in this interview shout out to him um this is not a shot at him because he's a phenomenal nba player um and congratulations to him and his family on the big old bag but i, I more want to talk about the team building aspect and how we can prevent teams from ending up in this spot and what can happen because you are in this spot so let me play the clip no we like but to have the pieces we have we have enough to know that we can compete on a nightly basis with no BS, right? We know that we got a job, everybody's able to be a star in their role, and we can go do that. On the flip side of it, the business side of it, there were no teams in the market. Oh, wow. Just free agency-wise, I'm just being frank, right? There were no, there was nowhere else for me to go, right? <laughs> Where I can, like, oh, I can go win, right? It would have been, it was teams that strategically wasn't, wasn't what I wanted, right? <laughs> Uh, so it just realistically, I won't say my hand was forced, but it, like this is this was my best decision, best option on the table at the time. So a lot, and I mean a lot to unpack there with Mr. Bradley Beal. Just want to remind y'all that Bradley Beal signed a supermax contract worth two hundred and fifty-one million dollars over five years, and he was also given one of the few no trade clauses in all of basketball. Now let's talk about the clip that he mentioned. There's a few things in it that I, that really, really got me thinking. The first one is, he said that wasn't really a market. Why? Again, shout out to Bradley Beal for being candid. I don't think a lot of people would have said, hey, no, nobody really wanted me in, in the position that I wanted to be in. Um, I'm sure he, he might be stretching just a little bit. I mean, there might have been teams with a little bit of cash that might have offered him a little sum sum, but it was a lot less than 251 M's. But my, the point I want to make is, if he is saying that the market for him wasn't great and the, the teams that did have a little bit of money he wasn't interested in, how the hell do we get to the point where Bradley Beal is making $251 million? How the hell do we get to the point where Bradley Beal is one of the few people in all of basketball to have a no trade clause if you were bidding against no one? This is one on one when it comes to team building that you don't compete with yourself and in this instance the washington wizards did that they might have saw this as hey we're gonna get bradley this bag so we get this this reputation as a as a team that take care of their players bradley been here since the day we drafted him he ain't been nothing but great to this city we want to give him the most money imaginable but now we looking back on it it's been a couple months since this contract is hit in and everybody like man even in the moment people are like man that is a lot of money for bradley beal and what makes it even worse is now with that contract on the books uh, it kind of pigeonholes your ability to make the roster better and one thing that i hear all the time with these teams that are that are in the mediocre field is the word retooling i i hear the word retooling so many times the washer was just traded for um kyle kuzma and then they traded for chris Porzingis. that wasn't a rebuild ladies and gentlemen they retooled the roster but they're in the same spot that they were in before those trades. And that is good enough to be in the play-in position, good enough to maybe be the seventh, the eighth seed, but not good enough to either be bad enough to get a top five pick because they've been in the lottery. Rui Hachimura, Denny Abdi, or Corey Kisper. These are, these are lottery picks that I want to say the word miss because they're late in the lottery. So they haven't been in the, in the situation where they have a good enough draft pick where you can potentially hit on a superstar player, but they haven't been good enough to warrant the stuff that is going on. They're retooling year after year after year. And that plays into the next part of what Bradley said that, that was very interesting to me about how he said every single day we put together a roster where we know we can compete. 
and that yes they can i mean the washington they're doing that right now after anthony davis gave them the absolute work shout out to anthony davis they're sitting at 11 and 13 they're sitting at 11 and 13 they can compete every single night you know what i'm saying they have bradley beauty half for his things is playing really good basketball they're gonna be in a lot of games but like are your fans satisfied with that later on in this interview i just take my word for it they were talking about how tommy shepherd who's running the team right now tells bradley beal very very regularly that no matter what is going on you are here uh, i don't like the sound of that i wouldn't like the sound of that i'm the watch the wizards not that we want to trade bradley beal but it's like we're gonna talk about the chicago bulls because they are also in this point where they're nine and 14 there's a report about chicago bulls they're saying that demar de rose and zach levine are untouchable untouchable in my opinion in my crazy brain the word untouchable is for a select few type of people the Giannis's, the 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 i guess at this point anthony davis even though his name was in some rooms a little while ago the way he been hooping right now the jason tatums the john morantz the zion williamson's these guys who are superstar caliber players uh, when you 9 and 14 on the team that should be good that you tried to build to be good nobody should be considered untouchable but for the washington wizards bradley Beal is untouchable he literally got a no trade clause if i wanted to trade him to a random team he could just say nah i'm good in the shock chicago bulls case what are we doing <laughs> what are we doing i'm not and listen i'm not advocating for trading demar or for trading zach levine but the word untouchable in my opinion is just such a strong word when you're bad you know what i'm saying if we were sitting at 15 and 9 you can use the word untouchable baby we the three seed in the east of hell yeah they untouchable but when you are um a team that again that was built to be competitive right now that you bought into a roster right now and you're five games under nobody on the roster should be considered untouchable and that leads to the chicago bulls potentially being on the spot of mediocrity what is next if you aren't trading those top two th uh, top two dudes what are we doing oh ladies and gentlemen it's time for a retooling that's what it's going to be and with the assets that you have a retooling maybe gets you a little bit better maybe it gets you back into the playoff picture but is, is that what we should be satisfied for as fans of the washington wizards as fans of the chicago bulls the new york knicks all of these teams that are stuck i'm giving the knicks a little bit of leeway because they have so many draft picks where in the split eye a superstar player can say i want out and boom they can go ahead and jump on top of that um because they saw that they missed out on donovan mitchell a couple months ago i think they won't do, do that twice but the the bulls and the washington wizards just the future is just really really grim i just don't know well okay actually i do know i do understand why teams that are stuck in the spot why they don't sell the perfect example of this is the orlando magic the orlando magic went through their period of mediocrity where it was vucevic aaron gordon and some 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 good enough to take one game away from the raptors behind a who had a big game a big dj augustine game but continuously was invited to the bubble to be like a seventh eight c but never did anything other than that and they made a decision one deadline it only took one deadline uh, almost two years ago and their future look looks brighter than a lot of teams in basketball they traded their also caliber player finesse the organization they traded their good role players got some first round picks back and just like that they've won the lottery they got a seventh overall pick that looks great they got some young pieces a part of the all-star caliber trade and future draft capital the orlando magic fans might not be extremely happy in this second because they're on an eight game win streak but every single day they watching they were like yeah palo's him yeah bo bo that was a good experiment and i'm happy that we did it they're giving their fans something to hold on to as hope with the washington wizards if you are a washington wizards fan what are you hopeful for right now if you're a bulls fan what are you hopeful for right now oh the bulls have had the toughest schedule in basketball so far so as soon as they start going against those bad teams they gonna go they're gonna shoot up the, the charts they might but if they get matched up against philly who win that series if they get matched up against atlanta who win that series uh cleveland ba uh, milwaukee and then boston you know what i'm saying so they're they're just stuck in this realm of good enough to maybe make the playoffs and if they do <laughs> we out of there in six ladies and gentlemen maybe <laughs> maybe out of there in six. sometimes it's five and the crazy part of it all is that these are these are two teams that operate as if they're smaller market teams they're not they're not the Chicago Bulls one of the biggest markets in basketball. I think the Washington Wizards was number nine when I just looked up biggest markets. These are some of the biggest markets in basketball, but they 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 ran as if they don't think that anything other than than just doing crazy trades and hopefully we hit on some crazy draft picks to make something happen. But I mean, I guess that's the, I guess that's the right way to do it because yeah, neither roster neither team has done much in recent history for even 
free agents to even want to come to. The Wizards haven't had a season where they won 50 games since 1979. They are a team that is perpetually in the, the realm of, okay, and I'm looking at a stretch right here from 2013 to 2018 uh they they had some runs you know i, I remember i remember the john wall game winner in the playoffs and everything like that but once that core was done with they should have been done done with and not just trading um wall away it's hard man it's, it's really really hard because when you when you have a team like this that again might be good enough to make the playoffs maybe miss but always on the cusp you're pigeonholing yourself to the 10th overall pick every season 10th 11th 12th 13th if you do make it boom we got number 15 which is outside the lottery and yeah we've had some success stories outside of the lottery it's a lot harder to hit on that pick it just is i mean the, the history of both of these rosters in recent history is is a bit iffy i think another thing that contributes to this is the the lack of development of the talent once you do get it uh, and I, I think the washington Wizards and the chicago bulls are not very good at developing homegrown talent and then you see someone go off to another organization afterwards and they look a lot better than what they did when they were with your team and it could be just because of time and experience or it just could be your staff just doesn't develop the young players good enough and the young players are the future when you're thinking about retooling in the chicago bulls case you you needed a patrick williams jump you ain't got that you needed Rui Hachimura, Denny Abdiya to take jumps and though they look all right they haven't taken the jumps so um, just just some ideas and things that are rumbling in my mind when I when I see that Bradley Beal interview I'm like man that's that's kind of bad <laughs> as a team builder it's kind of bad I don't know um, let me know what you think in the comment section about team stuck in mediocrity is there another team I haven't even mentioned um, I'm just thinking about the I'm looking at the rosters and the standings right now every single one of these teams has something they're, that's they're going for right now and those might be the two so I'll be in that comment section